Joe James. In this video I want to explain what is a hash map, how it's used, and how you can implement one in Python. So a hash map is really just a simple set of key value pairs like this. We have beans, corn, and rice, and then we have a value next to those. So a hash map is a data structure for storing this type of data. And typically the key is either an integer or a string. And the value could be any data type. So in a hash map, you have no duplicate keys. Each key has to be unique. And one of the great things about hash maps is that you can add, get, or delete from the hash map in big O of one time, constant time. So it's extremely fast for accessing this data. Hash maps are also called dictionaries, maps, hash tables, or associative arrays. They really are all about the same thing. Python, they call it dictionaries. They have a, a dictionary function called DICT. It's an existing data structure in Python, and I have a video that covers that in my Python data structures video. However, by seeing how to implement HashMap by yourself in this video, you'll gain a deeper understanding of how HashMaps work and how they can be used. So the three main components of a HashMap are an array, which is the data structure that we'll use to store the data, a hash function, which is a simple mathematical function that converts the key into an array index, and collision handling, which I'll explain in our example here. So here's our data, beans, corn, and rice. We're going to set up a simple array with five cells, and we're going to give those indexes from 0 to 4. Now we want to add beans, 1.85. So the first part is a string, and the second part is a floating point value. We want to add our key and value pair to the array. So what's the first thing we need to decide? Where to put it? So we have to convert this beans key into an index. We do that using the hash function. And in our hash function, we're going to use a really simple function that just uses the length of this key. There's one, two, three, four, five characters, and we'll subtract one. So we'll put it in cell four. So a hash function can be extremely simple, or it can be more complex. In this case, I just want to use a simple hash function to show you how it works. So now that we've placed beans in cell 4, we can get beans by using the same hash function to find the index that it's stored in. So when we call get beans, we get the index by calling the hash function. We find that it's in cell 4, and it returns 1.85. So next we want to add corn. We find that corn has length 4, minus 1, so it'll be stored in cell 3. So we place corn and 2.38 in cell 3 of our array. Now we need to add rice, but we find that rice goes into exactly the same cell, cell 3, that corn is already in. So we call this a collision. Multiple key value pairs map to the same cell of our array. And the way we're going to solve this there are a number of ways to do this. You could use a linked list, or we're, what we're going to use is just another list so that we can add rice into the same cell. So we have a list of pairs in cell 3. Each one of these cells will actually use a list to store these pairs in. And then when we need to recall rice, we can find that rice maps to cell 3. We'll iterate through the items in cell 3 until we find key rice, and then we'll return 1.92. So the performance of our hash map depends upon keeping as few items as possible in each cell of the array. We'd rather not have a long list of items we have to iterate through to find the item we're looking for. So ideally, we only have one item in each cell. So a better hash function might be, instead of just using the length of beans, we'll base this on the ASCII value of each letter in the key, and then take the mod 5 of that. So we'll use the ASCII or numerical value of each one of these letters summed up and then take the mod 5. And this hash function will enable us to randomly distribute our data across the entire array, which is what we want. Also in the real world, we would use a much longer array than just a five cell array. I used a five cell array so that I could show you what happens when we have a collision. So we can code this hash function in Python for char in key which iterates the characters in key, hash plus equals ORD, which is the numerical value of that char. And then when you get that total, we're going to take the mod 5 of that total of these char values. 
and that forces it into one of these five cells. Now let's look at the Python code. So we have a class called HashMap. In that class, our constructor has two simple variables that we set. We set the size of the array, which in this case, again, I use six just so I could illustrate what happens when we have a collision. But in the real world, we would probably default this to 64 or something. And then we have a variable called map, which is going to be our array that we're going to store the data in. We'll initialize map to set every cell equal to none. That way we can force Python to construct a list for us that has a fixed length. And then we have a private get hash function that takes a key. And it uses the code that I just showed you to calculate the index for that key. And we'll return that index. Next is our add function. Add takes a key and a value. First, we're going to get what I'll call the key hash, which is actually the index value that we're going to place it in. And we get that by using the get hash function that we just wrote. And then key value is what we want to insert into that cell. So key value is just basically constructing a list from the key and the value that were passed in. Now we want to check first if that cell is empty. If it contains none, then it's still empty. We can simply add to our map. At that index for key hash, we'll add a new list and we'll put the key value pair in it. If that cell of the array is not empty, then we should first check if this key is already existing. And if it is, we'll just update the value. If it's not existing, then we'll append it to the list. So we're going to iterate through each pair in this cell of the map. And then we're going to check if the key of that pair is equal to the key that we're passed in that we're adding. If it does match, then we simply update the value and return true. And if we didn't find a match for our key, then this is a new key. So we'll append this key value pair to that cell of the map and return true. So that's our add function. If that key already exists in the array, then we just update the value. If not, we add a new key value pair. Our get function, we simply get the hash given the key, and then we locate the cell. And if that cell is not none, then we're going to iterate through the pairs that are in that cell, and we're going to find the value that matches that key and return that value. And if we don't find that key, then we'll return none. In our delete function, we're passed in a key. First, we need to locate that key, so we get the key hash for it, which is the index. Then we check if that cell is none. If that cell is none, then that means that key value pair doesn't exist. So we're just going to return false. Then we'll iterate through the items in that cell of the map. The reason I use the range function here is because we need the index in order to remove something from a list in Python. So you can see here I use the pop function. When I locate the item that we want to remove, I pop that item off of the list and return true. My print function simply prints out every non-none cell in the array. And then to use it, we instantiate a new hash map by just saying h equals hash map. H dot add. We can, uh, I'm going to use this to add names and phone numbers. So I have a name and a phone number, and they're both strings. So I'm going to add Bob and then Ming, and then we'll overwrite Ming's previous data with this new data. We'll add several other names. And then Aditya also, we're going to see if we can overwrite this value with the 777 number. We'll print the map to see what it looks like. And then I want to delete Bob and print it again. And then we'll test the get function by getting Ming's phone number. So let's try running this. You can see we actually have three different items in this bottom cell. So we got two collisions with the second two items we added. You can also see that Ming's value was updated and the details was as well. And in the second print, you can see that we deleted Bob's listing. And then we got Ming's phone number. So in practice, you would probably start with an initial array size of around 64. So in this video, you learned how hash maps work and how to implement a hash map in Python using only arrays. I hope this video was helpful for you. You can see all my code on my GitHub site here. And if you like this video, I hope you'll subscribe. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.